Okay, uh, what I want to do with you now is, is uh, just show you how I lay them down and the benefits of laying them down. And uh, I think that it's real important, you know, for these colts to be soft and, and submissive, you know, in a way that they're not frightened. Um, so what I, what I like to do is just tie the foot up and, and put them in a bind. And, and the whole time I'm thinking about what I want my horse to do. I'm not thinking about what my horse is doing that's wrong. I just want to have a goal and get try and try and get them to to go in that direction by rewarding them when they do. I'll, I'll try and find a starting point. And what I'll do, I have a um, I have a rope here with a little hobble strap on the end of it. And I'll just go ahead and and uh, put it on his front foot here, down low. Now, I, what I see a lot of people doing um, when they lay their horses down is they they beg their horses quite a bit. And um, what I what I think is is that sometimes begging becomes arguing. And what I want to do is just make it very clear and definite what I want this horse to do. Now, if I want him to lay down, I'm going to have that goal, and I'm going to start rewarding him when he does it. If he doesn't do it. I'm going to just keep put, putting more and more pressure on him and increase that pressure until he does. So what I'll do is hold that foot up. I'm going to take his head around the side here. He's going down. Down he goes. Now he's quite, quite soft and relaxed and in a pretty sub submissive state right now. And that's kind of what I want. I want him confident. I don't want to hurt him when he's on the ground. Big thing about this is, is you know, if he ever gets in a bind to where you know, he's feeling like he's trapped, he's going to relax. I want him to relax, whether, when it, whether he gets caught in a fence or, you know, I want to handle his legs and make it a good, a good experience for him when he does it the way I want to. If I have a horse that has issues, you know, with a head or whatever, I'll go ahead and address those issues while he's on the ground. If, if I have a horse that has an issue with plastic bags or something like that, I'll go ahead and sack him out when they're on the ground. Now, if he tries to get up, I'm going to go ahead and put him back down again. I want him to understand that what I want is, is, the, is the, uh, the easy alternative. What he wants is, is the difficult alternative. Now. Yeah. There. And so the more and more that I do it, the, the easier it's going to get to where all, after a while I can do it without, without uh, with just much less resistance and I can add more feel and more signal into what I want him to do. You know, um, there's different theories about it, but more often than not, like uh, the, probably the, the best way to explain it is, is out in the wild, if you've got two horses fighting, once one horse is down, you've taken away all his, his flight, like because they're, they're a flight animal, they use their legs to get away and, and to fight with. So once you have a horse, once you take away his flight mechanism, he has to think about an, a, another way rather than fight. So, so you pretty, he's pretty much rendered defenseless, you know. And that's the thing. And if I can, if I can show this horse that, that he is defenseless, but I'm not going to hurt him, well, I'm just building up his confidence. 